Originally conducted as a friendly exhibition game, it was the eight-game series to define the Canadian cultural identity, the battle of two completely different philosophies, communism and democracy. Dubbed the Summit Series, it was a battle for ice hockey supremacy between the rugged Canadians and the swift Soviets. With the game tied at 3-3-1, they headed to Moscow for the eighth game on September 28, 1972, with millions of fans on their backs. Although this was just a hockey match, it was so much more. It was a battle to see which political system was truly the best in a world at the time when the Cold War raged on. This was the Cold War on Ice, and things were just getting started. Why was the Summit Series so significant to Canadians, Russians, and their respective political ideologies? The Summit Series was so important to Canadians and politics because not only did it determine if they were the true hockey heroes in a big clash of titans against the other super team in the Soviets, but it symbolized the ongoing battle between democracy and communism in a world where the Cold War divided them. During this seminar, we'll be looking at the cause of this series, the political importance, the importance of the Summit Series to the sport of hockey, and the outcome slash results of this event. Coming off an incredible streak of nine consecutive World Hockey Championships, the Soviets were getting ready for number 10 in 1972. Canada was always considered to have more talent and power, but because Canadian NHL stars were not eligible to play in international tournaments, amateur clubs were representing Canada, and the USSR was dominating. 1972, though, was the year Canada was allowed to have their stars on ice after an agreement with the NHL Players Association. It was settled on an exhibition series where it was powerhouse v powerhouse, an eight-game series from September 2nd to September 28th, split between Canadian and Soviet cities. This was the first time that we would see such a battle between Canada and the USSR for hockey dominance. If you thought this series was cool before the political aspect, wait till you hear this. During that period of time, the Cold War between the US, USSR, and their allies was blazing. The world was split into two sides and were indirectly in a war with each other. The series was important because it was Canada versus the USSR, democracy versus communism. You see, this Cold War was not fought with weapons or nuclear warfare, but was fought by their dominance of power. If the Soviets won, then communism would win symbolically, so it was important that Canada won to keep the democratic name alive and dominant in the Americas and the rest of the globe too. This was why it was called the Cold War on Ice, a reference to the war being represented in the game of hockey. Politics played a major role in this series, but so did the sport itself. The Canucks just had to have it, it was their cultural identity, it was their game, and they didn't want it taken by the enemy. On the international stage, they underperformed for quite some time. With only amateur clubs playing, they could never show their full potential. They were winning gold in the early 1920s and 30s, but when the Russians came on the stage, things took a turn for the worse. This time though, Canada finally got to show how powerful their hockey roster could be with their star-studded NHLers. As I mentioned previously, the NHL Players Association agreed to let Canadian stars play. Harry Sindon, the then coach of Team Canada, was quoted saying, The only thing that matters now is winning. We win this game, we win this series. We vindicate ourselves and everything that we stand for. They were heavy favorites to regain glory, but little did they know, they were in for a tough one. In game one of this friendly competition, Canada took an early two goal lead, only to see it vanish for the rest of the game as the Soviets won 7-3. Canada took notice as the enemy wasn't as bad as they thought. After the game, there was a slight bit of respect for the Soviets, but then it was covered by their outrage. They went back and forth, no prize, just all glory. They tied one game and won three apiece, while the final game was to be held on September 28th in Moscow. Anyone who watched the game that day could remember where they were. Many planted right in front of the old television set. After two periods, the Canadians found themselves in a hole that kept looming over them. Ken Dryden, the goalie, was quoted saying, In 20 minutes, I will be the most hated man in Canada. They overcame that deficit though, scoring three unanswered goals, with the final game winner by Paul Henderson. It was a great moment for hockey and North American politics, and will forever be engraved in the history of sports. 
In conclusion, the summit series of 1972 not only demonstrated the rivalry between Canada and the Soviet Union on ice, but it also symbolized conflicts between the democracy and communism. As the world continued to witness the Cold War, this match had political implications too. It would impact the views of many Canadian and North American citizens on the idea of a communist system. It also showed that even though the Canadians were the favorites to regain glory, it was a tougher task than thought, but they ended up living to expectations. This match not only taught us the revelations of hockey, but it also educated us on two different philosophies. Sometimes we need an eye-opener like this to show us different points of views and learn more about each side. So, when you think about it, the Summit Series shared more than just hockey.